Welcome back, ladies, gentlemen, and fellow cryptids. Today we are having a very, very nice field trip again, and it was sort of a faint one. Let me elaborate on that. So we are currently on the way to the island of Tassel. I'm backtracking, so step back. Friday morning, I was at my day job and I was discussing some possibilities with uh, a guest of mine that I might visit this place for. But a couple of hours later, when I was sitting over my research for my next project, 16th century of course, I stumbled upon a just published article about a very precious item they found near Tessel. This very precious item was found underwater and it's a trunk. It's a trunk full of fabric rubble. They found it in between uh, pieces of a sunken ship and this trunk contained a dress from around the 1650s. It's in abominable shape. It's just imagine. It spent approximately 200 years underwater and it still it still keeps its shape, it's still a bedding dress, and we're going to go and see that. So, to backtrack that, I said to my guest that I want to go and see this one. And, by the way, thank you Julia, she said like, oh, this project is so new. So that was the point when I strongly determined that I'm going to embark on this uh, journey in no matter what and uh, I decided to go on Monday and I happened to find out that on Monday this museum is closed except on 14 of November which is today as I mentioned wait okay we still have approximately 30 minutes of uh, train ride and I'm going to see you at Den Helder when we get on the ferry. After a brief breakfast in Den Helder, I started to walk down to the beach and I don't know, but personally I always feel this, this eerie feeling as I'm getting closer to the sea, not just the sands, not just how the air changes, but the feelings itself that the sea and the horizon is getting just a tiny bit closer and it always gets me smiling. Unfortunately, I did not manage to make any footage on the ferry. However, I managed to walk up on the wrong side on the exit, get lost in the ferry, awkwardly standing around waiting for someone to yell at me that why I am at the wrong place. But after all, I found the canteen and I was very, very busy of face planting Dutch cream pastries. Well, I happen to have some time to, to kill because, well, apparently 
You have to order a bus if you want to go in certain towns in Tassel, which I didn't know about. And I decided to set up camp here for like approximately for one more hour. Let me show you. Those are the ferries. And uh, So sad, right? So sad time just sitting on the beach and looking at the horizon. I'm so bored. <laughs> well, anyway, the, the route is settled already, so I have a way there and a way back, so I don't have to worry about that part of an adventure, but that's that's fun i guess so uh yeah you are stuck with me here oh that's a bird oh that's cute oh yeah let me show you the birdie Everything is so bad looking and boring and After gaining admission to the Kapska Museum in Tessel in Aldershield, I got affronted with a lot of bric a bracs from various shipwrecks and from various eras. It's just amazing how old stuff survives and despite the fact that in general I do not really appreciate these parts in museums when random plate pieces are just displayed for s s the sake of survival I do appreciate it here because these pieces were found underwater these things have a notable story and of course on some plates it's noted down in which uh, shipwreck they found it and one of my favorite was the shipwreck called Piss Jar. I cannot stop giggling about it. After the room of assorted marble pieces and uh, impressive sized cannons and much reminder to the colonial past and its failings, we got into the big boy's room with all the ship maquettes and I had the time of my life just playing around it. And all of them had their information and this table is actually the small size version of the Tessel road which is the Tessel ship route. So these ships however they did not exist at the same time or time frame they are still placed here as they are coexisting in the same haven. For the SEVI, there is plenty of information available about these ships and about their, their 
various furnishings and the time frame they existed in and the, the function they had. I could spend hours here, but unfortunately this is not the thing we came for today. Well, ladies, gentlemen, and fellow cryptids, this is what we came for. This is a new exhibition for the Kapskion Museum about the Palm Hotwek. The Palm Hotwek, they named it after the ample amount of boxwood and palm wood they found as a cargo. The whole atmosphere is just so unique and mesmerizing. Stepping into the room, which led to the treasures of the wreck itself, it feels like I am walking underwater. And I would not lie to you, my dear audience, I felt a little bit anxious. But it's... It's the feeling, it, it's worth... It's worth that small anxiety. It's such... Such an experience. The year is 1642. Charles I in England sent his 11-year-old daughter Mary to Holland to join her husband William II of the House of Orange. The young girl was accompanied by her mother the Queen and many followers. Yet the real reason for the diplomatic mission was may have been to send jewelry and other valuables over to Holland for safekeeping in the face of the growing opposition led by Cromwell himself. So by correspondences we know that the red dress most definitely belonged to Lady Jane Kerr, who was the lady in waiting for the king's wife, the queen. Uh, but we do know nothing about the supposed wedding dress. In my theory that it belonged, it ha might have belonged to Mary. The young lady got betrothed to William II when she was 9 years old. It's definitely not the dress she got married in, but it seems to be some sort of a duplicate to that. And regarding that it must be a diplomatic mission, it's nice to take, um, how can I say, uh, gestures, because, uh, well, Obviously, royal marriages are dicey, but you have to make do. According to the size, the style and the time, this could be said that it was owned by Lady Jane Kerr, Countess of Roxburgh, who did accompany the Queen and Mary on the road from England to the Netherlands on that rocky journey. The lady had a very, very eventful life and unfortunately she only survived the shipwreck with one year and she died at 58 in England. And right here the piece I journeyed for. I got a little bit emotional over it, as historians and res historians do over small surviving pieces of fabric, but allow me to be a little bit sentimental. Gotta get out, get some fresh air, get to the time of the thick 
for me. I almost cried. Of course, because I'm a cry baby. But well, it is what it is. Let's have some coffee, let's have some tea, let's have some walk around and then let's head back to the beach. Thank you for joining me on this mind-boggling one day 100 kilometer journey. I really appreciate you here and I'm going to see you in the next time. Please consider to subscribe if you didn't or push the notifications. I usually post around full moons. This is a bonus content so well see you in December. <laughs>